Hear ye, hear ye. The following is a reenactment from Perry v. Schwarzenegger, the Prop 8 trial in U.S. District Court. Dr. Gregory M. Herrick, professor of psychology at the University of California, Davis, expert witness for the plaintiff on the nature of sexual orientation, is under direct examination by the plaintiff's attorney, Ethan Dittmer. The plaintiffs in this case are two same-sex couples who simply want to marry, just as any other loving couple in America has the right to do. Court is now in session. Moving to a slightly different topic, Professor Herrick, do people choose their sexual orientation? Well, I've conducted research that, in which I found that the vast majority of lesbians and gay men, and most bisexuals as well, when asked if they feel that they how much choice they've had about their sexual orientation, about being gay or lesbian or bisexual. They say that they have experienced no choice or very little choice about that. Are you familiar with the terms reparative therapy or sexual orientation change therapy? I am familiar with those terms. Can you explain what those terms mean? Well, what the task force did a very thorough review of the research literature and first of all found that there were actually not very many high quality studies that had been conducted that could actually speak to the effectiveness of these therapies. But when one looks at the studies that are available and that have used the methods of sufficient quality, what one finds is that they are of very limited effectiveness and are also potentially associated with some harms to individuals. If I could ask you to turn to Exhibit 888 in your first binder, and also if we could have, I'd like to publish a first demonstrative, Your Honor. Professor Herrick, could you please tell the court what Exhibit 888 is? Well, this is the cover of the report from the task force that I just mentioned. And 888 in your binder is, can you describe what, it, what that is? sorry. It's the report of the American Psychological Association Task Force on Appropriate Therapeutic Responses to Sexual Orientation. And yes, the entire report is here in the binder. Okay. If we could move to the next demonstrative, please. If you look on pages two to three of Exhibit 888, do you find the conclusion here of the task force? Yes. And do you mind reading that, please, into the record? It's also on your screen there. Okay, it's easier to read it from the screen. Enduring change to an individual's sexual orientation is uncommon. The participants in this body of research continue to experience same-sex attractions following SOCE, the acronym for Sexual Orientation Change Efforts and did not report significant change to other sex attractions that could be empirically validated, though some showed lessened psychological arousal to all sexual stimuli. Compelling evidence of decreased same-sex sexual behavior and of engagement in sexual behavior with other sex was with the other sex was rare. Few studies provided strong evidence that any changes produced in laboratory conditions translated to daily life. Thus, the results of scientifically valid research indicate that it is unlikely that individuals will be able to reduce same-sex attractions or increase other sex sexual attractions through SOCE. Thank you. Are these conclusions consistent with your own opinion? Yes. Do you know whether the task force made any conclusions with respect to the safety of these types of therapies? Well, the task force pointed out that just as there are problems with the research on the effectiveness, which make it difficult to say that there is a cause and effect relationship between any changes that occur in and the actual participation in the therapies, they also found that there were many an an anecdotal reports of individuals who felt that they had experienced harm related to these therapies.